Easter. The Truth, Stiley William Hayward D.D. D. Easter. A.K.A. Ishtar. Or. Ashtoreth. The goddess Ishtar is the personification of the words of the great goddess, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. She is the goddess of love, sexuality, war, creation, guardianship, healing, abundance, fertility, and justice. Her name means star of heaven. She is called the queen of heaven, the morning star, the evening star, and the shining star of Venus. She is also the queen of the earth, fertility, and life's abundance. Ishtar Planet, Venus Emblem, eight-pointed star Sacred animals, dolphins, lions, snakes, scorpions, hedgehogs, hunting dogs, lions, dragons Numbers, 7, 15 Bird, Dove Stone, Lapis Lazuli Tree, Fig Offerings, Incense, Wine, Beer, Sweet Cakes Ishtar descended into the underworld, giving up her worldly possessions and magical powers. Ishtar's beloved husband, Tammuz, died when they were both very young. After a time, Ishtar fell in love with the great king of Giglamish, who rejected her. Ishtar decided to descend to the underworld to be with Tammuz, so dressed in her finest garments, jewelry and crown, Ishtar entered the cave that leads into the underworld. The underworld was surrounded by seven walls, each with its own gate that had to be passed to get to the dark place where the dead resided. She entered the underworld powerless and naked. Her old life and love for Tammuz were forgotten, and she was coated in feathers and dust. Ishtar was completely in the dark because the world's light had gone out. Life on Earth began to change as soon as Ishtar entered the underworld. The gods were sad since love and desire, birdsong, animal procreation, and lovemaking between spouses and wives had all ended. Ye, the great god, created a courageous creature and sent it to the underworld to save Ishtar. The goddess was brought back to earth, and she was even more powerful than before. To honor Ishtar, give her offerings of food and drink, make love, sing joyful songs and surround yourself with beauty. If you have moon or star jewelry, wear it in honor of Ishtar. Wear your loveliest clothes, apply makeup and perfume to align yourself with the goddess. The Assyro-Babylonian goddess of sex, war and political authority, and possibly Mesopotamia's most powerful mother goddess. She is known as the Queen of Heaven. Inanna and then Ishtar had temples in all of the great cities, Iana, House of An, in Uruk, Emak, Big House, in Babylon, and Emashmash, House of Offerings, in Nineveh. Temple prostitutes of both genders served her. Arabian Equivalent Adarsumain, Manit Egyptian equivalent. Anat, Hathor, Isis. Greco Egyptian equivalent. Philopanax. Greek equivalent. Aphrodite, Philopanax, Athena. Hindu equivalent. Durga. Israelite equivalent. Astaroth, Aster, Bilkis, Mikada. Mesopotamian equivalent. Inanna, Lilith, same person. Norse equivalent. Phrygia. Phoenician equivalent. Ashtart, Astart, Anat. Roman equivalent. Venus, Minerva. What exactly does the phrase Easter imply? It's not a Christian name, by the way. Its Chaldean ancestors are inscribed on its forehead. Easter is simply Astart, one of Beltis titles as the Queen of Heaven, whose name, as pronounced by the people of Nineveh, was clearly identical to the one now in use in this country. Ishtar is the name found on Assyrian monuments by Laird. The Druids, or priests of the groves, were among the first to bring the religion of Baal and Astart to Britain. If Baal was worshipped in this manner in Britain, it is not difficult to believe that his consort, Astart, 
was also adored by our forefathers, and that the religious solemnities of April, as now practiced, are known as Easter that month having been known among our pagan forefathers as Easter Monoth. The festival known in church history as Easter, which took place in the 3rd or 4th centuries, was substantially different from the one now commemorated in the Roman Church, and it was not known by that name at the time. It was known as Pasch, or the Passover, and while it was not an apostolic institution, it was commemorated by many professing Christians as early as the first century in celebration of Christ's death and resurrection. That feast was originally timed to coincide with the Jewish Passover, when Christ was crucified, a date that was thought to be the 23rd of March in Tertullian's day, near the end of the second century. There was no Lent preceding that event, and it was not idolatrous. The observance of the 40 days had no existence, so long as the perfection of that early church remained inviolate, wrote Cassianus, a monk of Marseilles, in the 5th century, contrasting the ancient church with the church of his day. Easter has a long and illustrious history. The Babylonian character of the feast is adequately confirmed by the popular observances that still mark the date of its commemoration. The Chaldean rites included hot cross buns on Good Friday and dyed eggs on Pasch, or Easter Sunday, exactly as they do still. As early as the days of Cecrops, the founder of Athens that is, 1,500 years before the Christian era the buns, known by that similar name, were utilized in the worship of the Queen of Heaven, the goddess Easter. One species of sacred bread, says Bryant, which used to be offered to the gods, was of great antiquity and called bound. Diogenes Laertius, speaking of this offering being made by Empedocles, describes the chief ingredients of which it was composed, saying, he offered one of the sacred cakes called baun, which was made of fine flour and honey. The prophet Jeremiah takes notice of this kind of offering when he says, the children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough, to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Hot cross buns are no longer provided, but eaten at the Astart festival, leaving no mystery as to where they come from. The Pasch eggs have a similar origin story. As the sacred insignia of their order, the ancient Druids wore an egg. One aspect of the nocturnal ceremonial of the Dionysiaca, or Mysteries of Bacchus, as celebrated in Athens, was the consecration of an egg. The ordinary eggs of the Hindu stories are described as being golden in color. The Japanese believe that their precious egg was courageous. Dyed or painted eggs are employed in sacred ceremonies in China at this hour just as they are in this country. Eggs were employed in Egyptian and Greek religious practices in ancient times, and they were hung up for mystic purposes in their temples. These mystical eggs can be traced down to the Euphrates River's banks in Egypt. An egg of wondrous size is said to have fallen from heaven into the river Euphrates, Hyginus, the Egyptian, the learned keeper of the Palatine Library at Rome, in the time of Augustus, who was skilled in all the wisdom of his native country, tells, an egg of wondrous size is said to have fallen from heaven into the river Euphrates. The fish rolled it to the bank, where it was hatched by the doves who had rested on it, and out emerged Venus, who was thereafter known as the Syrian goddess that is, Astarte. As a result, the egg became one of the symbols of Astarte, or Easter, and the egg of astonishing size was depicted on a great scale in Cyprus, one of the designated seats of Venus, or Astarte worship. The term Easter appears only once in the King James 1611 AV Bible, in Acts 12 verse 4. Pacha, the Greek word for Passover, is the translated term. The KJV Pacha slash Easter, on the other hand, makes no mention to the English Easter. There is an Easter celebration as well as a Pacha, Easter Passover. Easter is not a Christian term in its original sense. Easter is named after a pagan goddess and is now widely observed, including in Baptist churches. Easter is derived from the Greek words eostre, ostera, astrait, or ishtar, hislop. Today, when someone says Easter, they are referring to the goddess Ishtar. 12 colon 3, Deuteronomy, and you shall destroy their altars, shatter their pillars, and set fire to their groves, and you shall hew down their gods' graven images and wipe their names from the land. 
Non-Christian religions and cults are at the center of many of the joyous holiday rituals found in many churches around the world today. The egg was a revered emblem of the Babylonians and was not associated with Christianity. The goddess Astarte was birthed from an egg that fell from the skies, and the egg became the emblem of Astarte or the Baptist use of the word Easter for the Babylonians. The egg was a common emblem of fertility and restoration in pre-modern and pre-Christian cultures. Eggs were seen as a symbol of springtime rebirth by European pagans, a name used to refer to those who practiced a range of non-Christian faiths. This image was adopted by early Christians and ascribed to Jesus Christ rather than the Earth's regeneration. This was also extended to the dedicated followers of Christ's new life. Easter egg dyeing and decorating is an ancient tradition with an unknown origin, but it has been practiced in both the Eastern Orthodox and Western faiths since the Middle Ages. The Church forbade eating eggs during Holy Week, but chickens continued to lay eggs during that time, and the idea of decorating those eggs to distinguish them as Holy Week eggs arose. The egg became a symbol of the resurrection in and of itself. The egg signified new life coming from the eggshell, much as Jesus rose from the tomb. Eggs are painted crimson in the Orthodox tradition to represent Jesus' blood spilt on the cross. Even in current secular countries, the egg coloring ritual has persisted. The White House Easter egg roll, for example, has been held on the Monday following Easter since 1878, with minor breaks. So, the egg became a symbol of the Catholic Christianity, not the Bible. As the egg brings forth a chick into new life, let's symbolize this as a type of resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pope Paul V eating at remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ in his prayer. The Catholic Encyclopedia, because the use of eggs was forbidden during Lent, they were brought to the table on Easter Day, colored red to symbolize the Easter joy. This custom is found not only in the Latin but also in the Oriental churches. The symbolic meaning of a new creation of mankind by Jesus risen from the dead was probably an invention of later times. The custom may have its origin in paganism, for a great many pagan customs, celebrating the return of spring, gravitated to Easter. Many claim that Jesus died on Good Friday and arose from the grave on Easter morning, including your Baptist churches. But is it so? The day of the funeral, even when the latter takes place late in the afternoon, is counted as the first of the seven days of mourning, a short time in the morning of the seventh day is counted as the seventh day, Jewish Encyclopedia. When compared to the Good Friday thought that Friday is one day, Saturday the second and Sunday the third. But the third day, as Jesus said, three days and three nights, can be parts of the day, as listed in the Jewish Encyclopedia above. Matthew 12 verse 40 For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jewish realm of time there are twelve hours of night and twelve hours of day, John 11 verse 9 Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. A total of seventy-two hours across three days and nights. He was entombed for three days and three nights and finally awoke, according to Mark 8 verse 31, and be murdered, only to revive three days later. There is no reason to suppose otherwise in the 72-hour period based on thought and scripture. Matthew 27 verses 46 to 50 says Jesus died at the ninth hour, or 3 p.m., for that Sabbath day was a high day, says John 19 verse 31. If the resurrection had taken place at the same time three days later, it would have been sunset rather than daybreak. A sunrise resurrection would have necessitated a fourth night rather than a third. At sunrise, when the women came, the resurrection had already happened, hence the rock had already rolled away from the tomb. Mark 16 verse 2 John 20 verse 1 The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, 
and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Says it was dark. Matthew 28 verse 6 He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Jesus was not there, he was risen, before they came, in the morning. Mark 16 verse 9 Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, was not is risen. Past tense not present tense. The first day of the week, when they came, they did not witness the resurrection for it already happened earlier. Counting back for a total of three days, Wednesday. Not Friday. Wednesday night. Thursday night. Friday night. Three nights. Thursday. Friday. Saturday. Three days. Total of three days and three nights. 72 hours. Luke 24 verse 21, But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Luke 24 verse 14, And they talked together of all these things which had happened. All things not just the resurrection. Scripture, Matthew 20 verses 18 to 19 Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests, and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, and to scourge, and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. All these things covered a lot of ground. On the day of preparation, Jesus was crucified, Wednesday. The men of Israel approached Pilate the next day, Thursday, requesting that he seal the tomb to prevent his disciples from snatching the body. These things were up until the tomb's sealing on Thursday. As to all the events of Jesus' death and burial, but not the crucifixion itself, the first day of the week, the third day for the men. There is a significant issue. Cross-references are ruined in modern Bibles because words and verses are added and removed. I don't care what man says, the main question is, what saith the Lord God? That matters. Jesus died before the Sabbath, leading some to assume it was Friday. Okay, but, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Sabbath was not a weekly Sabbath. It was an annual Sabbath, John 19 verse 14, and it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. They prepared and then rested on the Sabbath, according to Mark 16 verse 1. Luke 23 verse 56 states that they prepared and then rested on the Sabbath. In a single week to Sabbaths, Unless you're a Catholic or a poor, naive Baptist, the basic concepts of college and university algebra and arithmetic indicate that no one can get three days and three nights, 72 hours, from Friday to Sunday. John 19 verse 31, The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation, that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was in high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. This high day, or Sabbath, might have fallen on any day of the week, but it fell on Thursday for Jesus' death. Jesus was crucified and buried on Wednesday, the day of preparation. The next day was the Sabbath of the high day, Thursday. Then, the day before the weekly Sabbath, on Friday, Saturday, the two Sabbaths that week explains how Jesus died before the Sabbath and to be resurrected after the Sabbath. Fulfilling the three days and three nights, 72 hours. Mark 16 verse 1, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices, that they might come and anoint him. Luke 23 verse 56, and they returned, and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Encyclopedia Britannica states, came to Christianity from antiquity. 
The hair is associated with the moon in the legends of ancient Egypt and other peoples. Through the fact that Egyptian word hair, UMI, means also open and period, the hair came to be associated with the idea of periodicity, both lunar and human, and the beginning of new life in both young men and young women, and also a symbol of fertility and of renewal of life. As such, the hair became linked with Easter eggs. The Easter egg and the Easter rabbit come to symbolize sexuality and fertility. Silly hair, Easter is for pagans. When you bring eggs on Easter, with or without the rabbit, it is a symbol of Egypt for sexual renewment. Human and animal females each have an unfertile egg inside them, as we know. That a male sperm must fertilize the egg. Life begins when the female egg and male sperm unite. So, when you set out the Easter eggs, you are, in reality, a symbol for the kids. You're representing the youngsters, male or female, as sperm hunting for eggs in church, as sperm in your Easter egg hunt. The Easter egg hunt entails genuine female and male sexual mating, as well as the release of sperm, in order to locate the egg in Easter egg hunt. During the Easter season, sunrise services are prevalent. A morning service is attended by Christians of all denominations. This is thought to commemorate Jesus Christ's resurrection on Easter Day, when the sun rose as he arose. The resurrection of Jesus, however, did not take place when or as the sun rose. It was dark when Mary arrived at Jesus' tomb and Jesus had already risen. John 20 verse 1 The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. There is, however, a sunrise service. It was a morning service from the past. The purpose of this sunrise ritual was to celebrate the sun rather than the sun. A morning service is described in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 8 verse 16, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and, behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Worship the sun to the east, your sunrise service, Baptist. Ezekiel 8 verse 17, Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence, and have returned to provoke me to anger, and, lo, they put the branch to their nose. What did God say? Come on, Baptist, read it. The house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here, abomination, sunrise service is an abomination. The branch to the nose, says Fosset, alludes to the idolatrous usage of holding up a branch of tamarisk to the nose at daybreak whilst they sang hymns to the rising Sunday. To Baal or Baal, the sun god of fire, the prophets that Elijah challenged. That they began their service to Baal or Baal, at the morning, sunrise, to the east. 1 Kings 18 verse 26 And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal or Baal, from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal or Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. In the dawn, in the morning, when their Baal or Baal arose in the east. Who else besides the Baptist and Catholics and look east? The Egyptian sphinx faces east. In Japan facing east are prayers from Mount Fujiyama. Shinto pilgrims climb the mountains facing east to pray, chanting to the sun rising. Pagan Mithrists of Rome reverence the sun god at dawn to the east. The Spring Goddess From where Easter arose. Easter is associated with the rising sun. Easter, the rising sun god, Baal, or Baal, never Jesus Christ. Tammuz. According to tradition, he died and descended into the underworld. 
but not Ishtar's wailing mother, Easter. He was resurrected in a mysterious way. Tammuz's resurrection became an annual event in the spring, thanks to his mother's grief. This ensured the fertility of males and the success of the harvests. The pagans wept over Tammuz, their dead deity who had come back to life on a national scale. Their goddess's blessings were renewed as a result of this festival. They had a savior when the crops began to grow. He arose from the depths of the underworld to usher in the season of spring. Sorry to say Israel adopted this pagan festival. Ezekiel 8 verse 14 Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house which was toward the north, and, behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. The King James 1611 AV Bible Tammuz is a real God. Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, according to Christians. By his resurrection, he did not usher in spring, close winter, or even spawn crop growth. His resurrection demonstrated God's power and the gospel's sealing of Christian faith. Because the resurrection occurred in the spring, the church began to include pagan springtime rituals in the 4th century. Encyclopedia Britannica Christianity, incorporated in its celebration of the great Christian feast day many of the heathen rites and customs of the spring festival. Silver Ravenwolf Fairy Tales of the World Encyclopedia of Spirits Judica Illes The Two Babylons Alexander Hislop Copyright 2022 Encyclopedia Britannica Incorporated Jewish Encyclopedia Ibit Vol 11 PG 390 The Catholic Encyclopedia Man and His God, Smith Egypt Belief, Bonwick